there, I'm Wendy and in this video I'm going to show you how I'm going to make a repair to one of the sleeves on this sweater that I've just finished making. Um, after I finished making it, I suddenly noticed there's a slight difference between the two cuffs. So I'm going to cut away one of the cuffs and detach it completely from the upper arm so I can make my repair and then I'm going to show you how I graft it back together using Kitchener Stitch. So I hope it's something that's interesting to watch and I hope it's useful if ever you have to do anything like this yourself in the future and it gives you an idea on how to go about it. So I'll bring in the overhead camera and we'll take a look at the difference between these two cuffs. Now when it comes to working colour work and you're holding the yarn in two different hands, what you find is that the yarn in the right hand settles more and becomes the background colour, whereas the yarn in the left hand, it pops a little bit, it's a little bit more prominent and that becomes a good contrast colour. So with this sleeve here, when I've knitted these cream rows, I've had the yarn in my right hand. So the cream yarn has been in the right hand and it's settled back into the work. But when I've worked this sleeve, I've mistakenly held the yarn in my left hand. And so these cream rows, they just pop a little bit more and they just look a little bit more prominent in real life. So I'm not sure whether the camera picks that up, but every time I look at it, I can see it. So I just want to rectify that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut through and unravel from just above the motif design here. Then I can just unravel it and rectify it and re-knit those cream rows with the cream yarn now being held in my right hand. So when I've finished re-knitting this little section here, I'm then going to graft the lower separate section of this sleeve back onto the main section using Kitchener Stitch. So all I need to do now is have a couple of cable needles to hand, a wool type darning needle, a small pair of scissors, and I'm also going to use two little padlock style stitch markers, and we'll just get going straight away. Now my sleeve here has been knitted in the round, but the technique is basically going to be the same, whether you've got a flat piece of knitting or you've got a circular piece of knitting like I have here. So what I'm going to be doing is picking up a stitch just along the top of this motif. And for me, I don't want to go any higher because I've got an increase round just above here. So I'm going to find the beginning point of my round and I'm going to insert my needle into the center of the first stitch and then out the side. And then again into the center of the next stitch and out the side. And then along to the next stitch, I'm going through the center and coming out the side. And I'm going to work all the way along, going through the center of each stitch and coming out the side of it. So I'll continue this until I've picked up all the stitches that are just above the top row of the motif in this round. Now, just a little tip when you're grafting, when you're looking at stocking stitch, each stitch looks like a V and each side of the V is called a leg. So you've got the left side of the V here is the left leg and the right side of the V here is the right leg. So when it comes to picking up stitches, I always want to make sure that I have the right leg sitting on the front side of the needle. So that's how the stitch would appear if you're about to knit along a row. So if your needles are pointing to the right hand side, so if you've got your needle pointing from left to right, and this is usually for left handed people, you want to go through the center of the stitch to the back and then come out of the side. Go into the center of the next stitch and come out to the side. And I'll do that once more. Go into the center of the next stitch and come out at the side to ensure that you have the right leg of your stitches sitting on the needle. However, if you're picking up your stitches with your right hand, you want to make sure that you go behind the stitch and come out the front at the center. So you go behind the next stitch and then come out to the center at the front of the stitch. So I'm going to go into one more. I'm going to go behind the stitch and then come out through the center. 
again to make sure that you have the right leg sitting on your needle. So that's if you're using your right hand and you've got your needle pointing in the left hand direction. And by doing that, that will help ensure that you don't twist any stitches as you're grafting because that will appear as a slight scar when you're sewing your work together. Okay, so I've now picked up all the stitches along the top row above the motif and I've just got this one little stitch here that's the connecting stitch between the beginning and the end of the round and it's a purl stitch. So I'm just going to pop a little stitch marker in that as well so that I know I can't lose that stitch. So I'm just popping my stitch marker in there to hold it. And now I'm ready to cut into my work and remove this lower section. So I'm going to snip into one of the stitches like this and then I can start to unravel. And so I'm just gently easing out the stitches from the row below. And where I've placed the needle, the stitches are now caught and they can't unravel any further. So here we see we've got live stitches now sitting on our needle. So I'm going to do this all the way around and I'll have this bottom part of the sleeve detached. And so I'm just working my way around, removing the yarn and removing the lower section of the sleeve. And while I'm doing this, if you're new to my channel, it would be lovely if you click to the subscribe button and the notification bell so that you get to hear when my next videos go live. And if you like my videos, it would be lovely if you gave me a thumbs up as well. So I'm just going to continue doing this now until I've reached the end of this round and I'll have detached this lower part of the sleeve away from the upper part and then I can focus on rectifying it and putting it all back together again. So I'll meet you when I get to the end of the round. Okay, so I've now separated the lower part of the sleeve from this upper part and everything is held in place on the cables and my centre stitch here is being held by the stitch marker. So I can now focus on this lower part of the sleeve and rectify my motif before reconnecting it. So I'm now going to pull back my work to the beginning of the patterning and re-knit it and then I'm going to meet you back here again and we'll look at grafting this lower section of the sleeve back to the upper section. So it's another day later and I've now knitted this lower section of the sleeve again and I'm much happier with it. So I'm now ready to connect the live stitches on the lower sleeve to the live stitches on the upper sleeve and I'm going to do that with a method of grafting called Kitchener Stitch. But just before I start that I'm just going to show you a little bit of grafting on a flat piece of knitting just so that you can get the gist of what I'm doing when I'm actually doing the kitchen a stitch. So I've made these two little samples here and they're both stocking stitch and the top edges haven't been cast off or bound off so they're both live stitches and they're both raw edges but what I want to do is I want to join both of those edges together with a seamless appearance. So it's basically, it's like doing a little running stitch from one side of the work and then coming across to the other side of the work and back and forth. But you've just got to be a little bit careful with your technique. So I'm going to pop these two together and then I'm going to take my needle and I'm going to bring it up through the back and through the center of one of the stitches. Now it doesn't matter which side you start on, and it doesn't matter whether you're doing this left-handed or right-handed. It's going to be the same principle. So I've come up with my needle has come up from the back of my work through the center of the first stitch and come out of the front. 
Now I'm going to jump across to the other side and it's almost like doing a running stitch. I'm going to go in through the center of the front of the first stitch to the back and then I'm going to come from the back through the center to the front of the next stitch. So if you can see that more clearly and then I'm going to take my needle through There we go. And I like to leave my stitches loose until I've finished at the end and then I tighten it all up. So now I'm going to jump back across to this side, but I'm going to go into the stitch where I just came out of, where my pink thread is. So I'm going to pop my needle through the center of that stitch that I just worked in on the first side. So I'm going from the front to the back and then with the next stitch, I'm going to come from the back to the front. So I'm coming out the back of the stitch and to the, the front of the stitch. So I'm going to bring that out as well. So now I'm going to jump across and I'm going to go back into that stitch where I last came out of. So I'm going to go in from front to back, up to the next stitch and then come out from the back to the front. Okay. And then I'm going to bring my needle and thread through. And again, I'm leaving this a little bit loose. And then again, I'm going to jump across to the other side of my work and where that pink thread came out of, I'm going to go back into the same stitch from the front to the back. And then I'm going to go to the next stitch and I'm going to come out the center of the stitch from the back to the front. And again, I'm going to jump across to the other side of my work and where the pink stitch came out of my cream knitting, I'm going to go through the front to the back and go across to the next stitch and come out from the back to the front. And this is the method that I just keep repeating all the way along. So I've now got these two pieces of knitting ready to go and the stitches that are on the stitch marker on the upper and lower sleeve, that is just the extra stitch that I use as a seam line and that's a purl stitch. And so when I finished doing this color work, I increased one stitch, which I'm then going to connect to this purl stitch. So these two just correspond and I'm just keeping them out the way until I finished working on my Kitchener stitch. So I'm going to bring my needle from the back to the front through the first stitch on my right hand needle and it really doesn't matter which side you're starting first. It's just a repetitive um, pattern of going from one side of your work to the other. So I've got my yarn coming out the center front of my work and I'm going to take the yarn through the center front to the back of the other side of my work and then I'm going to lift that first stitch off the needle and then I'm going to go to the next stitch and I'm going to come from the back of my work the purl side of my work back through to the front which is the knit side of my work and bring the needle back up through the center of the stitch and leave that stitch on the needle. I've got quite a long piece of yarn here. Then I'm going to go across to the other side and I'm going to go from front to back through that first stitch and lift it off the needle and then come from back to front on the second stitch and leave that on the needle. And again, I'm going to the other side of my work and I'm going to go from front to back 
through the first stitch on my needle and lift that off my needle and then come through from back to front on the second stitch and leave that on the needle. And again to the other side, I'm going to come back and I'm going to go through, if you can see it properly here, front to back of the first stitch on my needle. And lift that stitch off the needle. And then come from the back to the front through the next stitch on the needle and leave that stitch on. and then come back across to the other side of my work. Now basically what I'm doing is I'm going from front to back through the first stitch and taking it off the needle and then coming back to front through the second stitch and leaving it on. So I'm creating that running stitch effect. So it's like I'm doing a running stitch on one side of my work and then coming back and doing a running stitch on the other side of my work. But basically, you just need to remember that you've got to lift the first stitch of the needle every time you do this process. So I'm going to do it again. I'm going to take my needle from the front of my work to the back of my work and then lift the stitch off the needle and then go from the back of my work to the front of my work and leave it on. And again to the other side, I'm going to go from the front of my work to the back of my work and lift that off the needle. And then on the next stitch, come from the back of the work and through to the front and leave it on. But I'm going to continue doing this all the way round and then I'm going to come back and tighten up my stitches. And I like to leave mine quite slack actually and then I go along with a needle afterwards and rearrange my stitches so I can get as nearer the same tension as my original knitting as possible. So I'll meet you when I get to the end of working this complete round. So I've now finished connecting my sleeve and basically I'm going to start working my way around now and I'm going to be tightening all these stitches up. So I'm just going to be taking a needle through and just gradually stitch by stitch working my way along so that I can get these Kitchener stitches that I've now worked into the same tension as my original knitting so that the join shouldn't notice at all. So I'll start working this way along and I'll come back to you and show you the final results and then I can just finish off by connecting in these two pole stitches that are connected on my stitch markers. So I'll see you when I've neatened this all up. And I'm back again now from tightening up all those loose stitches and I've got both pieces of my work completely joined together and I think it's looking pretty good. So I'm quite happy with this now and all I'm going to do is connect those two stitches that are on the stitch markers. So I can finally say that my grafting project on this sweater is now complete and all I need to do is go away and darn in all those ends in my fair isle yoke so i'd just like to say thanks for watching and don't forget if you're new it would be great if you subscribed to my channel and click that notification bell and don't forget to give a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video so thanks for watching and take care and i look forward to seeing you soon